Hello and welcome to this special Christmas edition of the show. Now, I do appreciate I haven't been putting out so much content recently, and that's because I've been super, super busy at work. But I am joined today by my good friend Timur, who's going to be talking about how to clone MasterCards using Google Pay. Now, this is something that we all pretty much use, where we all store our cards in our phone because it's convenient or have it on your watch as well so you can pay. And today he's going to show just what can be done and what can't be done. Anyway, thank you. Over to you, Timur. Thanks, Quentin. Uh, yeah, the Christmas is close. Uh, and as you may know, in November at Black Hat, we shown on about vulnerabilities uh, in transport car, in transport modes, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay. And the part of our research was about Google Pay, but Google Pay had uh, their own specifics. It was not about transport cards. We already shown things related to Visa. That's why during most of like presentation interviews, I was uh, not given too much of details referring to the white paper. And today I'm going to fix this problem. Today I'm going to show how to make a clone uh, of GPay uh, mobile wallet with uh, active MasterCard card by default. And what's the actual risk to the ordinary person? To the person watching this, what's the what's the risk? What's the worst that someone could do with this? Well, imagine that you you haven't lost your phone, but you you didn't know where it was for about five ten minutes. Well, it literally That's not an uncommon scenario. Literally, can be seconds. Yeah. <clears throat> And then you found your phone, you feel pretty comfortable, you didn't need to worry about anything. No, because you, you found even, it, you've got it back. You can even unlock back your, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. your card, yeah, yeah. you didn't need to, you, you call your band. Uh, but then suddenly there is a chance someone can use uh, the data that we're able to steal within this very short window of opportunity to make payments in, in supermarkets anywhere at any stores. And uh, for even, anything they want. Yeah, and even normally the phone, locked phone has restrictions. Now it's like essentially £100 per transaction. This restriction can be bypassed. Uh, and basically what hackers need to do is they just need to be persistent enough. They need to go and tap and tap and tap. And after 20, 30, 50 attempts, they were able to hit the nail and basically get information to still money from your card. And what are they doing in those 30 attempts? Uh, well, basically, it's it's about the old vulnerability covered by Michael Rowland uh, in 2013 and about the legacy modes of MasterCard. So uh, when... And these are in place because of the US... Master, when MasterCard transmitted information, made NFC cards, yeah, yeah. and they, they took most of information from EMV, yeah, and, and like follow the standard protocols of EMV. However, they were very keen to explore uh, very mature by that time US market. Mm. In the US market, point of sales did not support cryptography. And EMV massively relies on the cryptographic functions on the terminal, yeah, offline data authentication, mm. public key exchange, RSA, etc., etc. And to avoid these, they've created uh, aka legacy modes, mm. which are like a silly, very insecure, uh, well, less secure methods, but on NFC. Mm. And because of insecurity of a legacy mode for MasterCard, their maximum entropy of uh, all, all possible transactions are normally like 999 or 10,000. Ah, oh, uh, hence options. the 30 attempts. Yeah, and ah. basically you still five transactions and if you do 30 attempts trying to get one mm. of these five transactions that you only was able to steal, the possibility for you to get one of these five numbers based on like... Uh, Pure probability. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like basically independent, independent uh, probabilities, yeah, the Bernoulli mm. trial formula. And that basically says us that uh, within 50 transactions, if you try 50 times, your chance of uh, getting one of these five pre-recorded transactions will be around 20%. Yeah, so people... 
twenty percent is, uh, is is betting odds. That's that's really that's that's yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. If all you need is just go and tap and tap and. And tap there's very and little tap. risk to you. Basically, no risk. Uh, yeah, twenty percent. That's that's not bad. That's good. Uh, well, that's bad actually. I'm sorry, am I saying that's that's bad? I'm not. A, we're not criminals here. Um, okay, so so you're going to demonstrate it today. What we're going to do is going to bring the camera in a bit closer. We're going to uh, take me out of the shots. I don't need to be here. And then we're going to have Timur narrating exactly what he's doing with the camera an awful lot tighter in shot. So let's get in closer. So I'm going to show at the beginning how it works normally. Yeah, so you need only to activate the screen and for the first three transactions, they will go through in this uh, legacy mode. Successfully get a notification, completed payment. Uh, and so on. Then we are getting another one. Meanwhile, you can activate the screen without touching it. You can, if you're gonna call on the phone and the screen will uh, be activated because someone is calling, NFC payment also will go through. This is number two. And I'm doing just payments for one pound at first and now it asks already to unlock the phone so you're limited with amount of transactions especially in this mode that you can do but at the beginning of the year you were able to steal information about up to five transactions yeah and let's see what you potentially can do could do with these five transactions. All right, so this time we have the phone when we saved, not five transactions, we saved something around like, more like 20 transactions, because it will take much quicker time to show the concept. But obviously, even with five transactions, as you can imagine, uh, the possibility might be high if you will try long enough. And the payment is not going for one pound, this time is going for 105 pound, which is still above the minimum limit that can't be done without unlocking the phone, without presenting uh, the card holder, any card holder verification. And uh, now we're gonna try and to just hit the right uh, random number. Yeah, so on the screenshot on, on, on the application, you see every UN that is going, and I basically put everything in a loop. Uh, so now it's just a matter of luck. And if the UN that was pre recorded will be actually presented, so if the UN will be in database, you can see the same notification that it was found in a database and transaction will go through.
So eventually, after like 20, 30 attempts, we got one of successful UNs that were in a database. Uh, in the database, there was only 20 of them, like randomly spread across number of 150 or something like that. Uh, and because we have this record for this UN number 115, and in the cryptogram there is no price, no date, nothing like that. We literally can put any date, any, 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 any amount, any price we want, and this time price was above uh, top and go limits, just to prove maximum amount that you can pay. So, so thank you, Timur. That was absolutely uh, amazing. It's, it's interesting to note that as you said, it's, it's fixed here in the UK and most of Western Europe, but probably there's other regions where this is still vulnerable. So my card could go virtually traveling then and could get charged traveling virtually. Uh, so since March, Google added special feature mm. that disallow, uh, that gives a possibility for users to disallow NFC payments on mm. locked form at all. Uh, so if you have this feature, you just go there, turn it on, and you're fine. Uh, in most of regions, Google slowly reduced uh, amount of transactions that you can do on the locked phone at all. Yeah, so it's like what's going on with cards nowadays in mm. Europe. Yeah, you have like maximum five contactless transactions, then you need to present a PIN code, you use EMV, something like that going on with uh, Google Pay approach. Mm. And uh, I saw countries where they literally on my eyes, I've seen how uh, slowly thresholds increased. Uh, initially, it was three transactions. There are still regions that allow you to do like up to three transactions here, yeah, mm. they possibly uh, potentially under risk. In the UK, uh, you can't pay unless your phone is unlocked. Using we this stopped mode. it instantaneously. Using, using yeah. this mode, yeah. yeah. In other modes, you still can do it within like these limits of 100 pounds. Yeah, but yeah, more or less, this vulnerability is eliminated. Right, right. Well, thank you for that. So everybody, don't have nightmares. This is being addressed, but obviously you just need to be aware of the fact that with increased convenience, there comes increased features, and with increased features becomes potentially more security issues. So... As this is the last video that I will be putting out, more than likely, maybe I'll try and squeeze one in next week of 2021. Please have a wonderful Christmas or festive season. Have a great new year. Um, if you are buying gadgets for your family, for your friends before Christmas Day, remember right now, right now when you get this video, it might be a good opportunity to get the device out of its packaging and try and update it so that you're not trying to update it on Christmas Day. Because if you have bought a games console, phone, tablet or whatever else, You'll be waiting with 10,000, 10 million other people all trying to press update on the 25th. You don't want your dinner going cold. So have a great, great, great time. And please don't hack anything you shouldn't.